and welcome back to the Web Truth Tutorial. I'm Vicki, this is Seth, and Hola. Hola. So guys, uh, today we are going into jealousy in 2 Corinthians 10 and 11. We're going to read part of it, but I really want to read something that is in the, <clears throat> we're going to go into a new book today. It is the Aramaic English New Testament, and I wonder if this is showing that uh, where they can read this. It's probably, uh, it's really probably backwards. Oh, I got it there. I got it. I uh, know it's on the right. So good. You can read this. This is by. It's by the the Not Sorry Press, but it's Roth. I think his name is David Roth. But this is a really good New Testament study. It is an Aramaic version, <clears throat> and this is, I'm really going to be using this a lot today, as well as Seth is reading out of the Complete Jewish Bible by uh, David Stern. Yep, David Stern, and we also use the Scriptures Bible. So, um, last week we had a young lady call. She was like, what kind of Bible are you using? It is the Scriptures, and it's put out by... The Institute for Scriptural Research. Some of you may want to contact them. You can buy them. They're not, they're really not very expensive. If you're buying the paperback, they're what, $14? So, somewhere around in there. The hardback, show you know how much those are? No? I'm going to say they're probably 20 maybe. But you can get hardback or paperback. And I love the Scriptures Bible. It's really probably one of my favorite Bibles. It's the easiest to understand. And in this Bible, what's the difference, guys, between this and regular Bibles, like the King James? It puts Yah's name back in the Bible. It has put Yahweh's name. The name of our Father has been replaced back in the Bible where it was removed. So they've put it back in. They've also put the name of our Messiah, Yahusha. Some people say Ye Yeshua. Some people call our Father's name Yahweh. I, it doesn't matter how you pronounce it, but what we do know is his name's not God. His name's not Lord. Huh? And it's not Jesus. Right? If you want to call him Jesus, I don't have a problem with it, as long as you know that he is the law, and he is a walking, talking, living, breathing Torah of Yah. So, <clears throat> he didn't come to do away with any of the law, so... Let me just read that to you where it Matthew comes. 5, 17. It comes straight from his mouth, doesn't it? You were thinking the same thing I was. This is what our Savior, Yahusha, Yeshua, however you want to pronounce it, or if you want to say Jesus, Jesus has no meaning though. Uh, our Savior's name, Yeshua, actually means the right arm of salvation. And this is Yah's right arm of salvation. And we're going to see that, not necessarily in the portion today, this morning, but in our tour portion this afternoon. It is Yah's right arm. It's his word. It's his breathed out memory that is moving them all the way out through the sea and taking care of Pharaoh. And he is mighty. And Yah uses him in a mighty way. Okay, so here is who, if you know that this is our Savior, he says in chapter 5 of Matthew, verse 17, he says, Do not think I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. He came to show you how to walk it out, guys. He didn't come to do away with it. He goes on to say, for truly, I say to you. Now, this is key because people go, well, he, he did it, and we don't have to do it now. That's like saying my dad drove the speed limit for his whole life. He never got a ticket. So I don't have to obey the, the traffic laws, right? Yeah. I can drive 120. <laughs> Yay, because I like speed. <laughs> don't say anything. Not, not speed, but going fast. <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> I'm as goody two shoes, okay? I mean, they have to explain to me what drugs are. Okay, so, so guys, he didn't come to finish anything. He came to show you how to walk this out. Without him as an example, he's our big brother, right? As, without him as an example, how do we know how to walk it out, right? He said, for truly I say to you, till the heaven and the earth pass away, not one yod, not one tittle, shall be by any means pass from the Torah till all be done. Has everything been done? No, ma'am. No, but if you're just reading the back of the book, you don't know that, right? Because you don't yes. know what all has to be done, because it's all in the front of the book. 
He is the front of the book, guys. He is a, the, the word from the beginning to the end, and John tells us that. So he says, it's not all been done. We still have heaven. We still have earth. Not everything's been done. Whoever then breaks, listen to me. I want you to listen. This is so important. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches man so shall be called the least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches him, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. What is the least of the commandments? <coughs> Did, have y'all, there's 613. Not all of them apply to all of us, right? We're not all priests. In fact, there aren't any priests right now, right? Okay, uh, we're not all farmers. We're not all men. And y'all are not all women, right? I hope. Okay, we know what we are, right? Okay. <laughs> so what was the least command? Don't eat a mama bird with the egg. If you find a mama bird sitting on the eggs, take the eggs. But don't take her life too. Let, either take, her, take the eggs and leave her alone. <coughs> or, uh, that's basically what he's saying. And there's another one that I would consider like the least. Don't cook a baby in his mama's milk. Now he's not telling you don't eat meat with milk. He's saying don't cook a baby in the milk that nourished it from the mother who gave it life. This is our father. He counts even the head of the sparrow, and we're going to see that today. He, he loves us so much that he, he cares about everything. So that would be the least. So if you teach someone, if you teach them, yeah, let's go hunting and let's get that quail and let's take our eggs both so we can have scrambled eggs and meat. Y'all says don't do that. It's not right. If you teach someone to do that, guess what? You're guilty. I don't think you're going to be in the reign of heaven. The reign of heaven is huge. It's going to be the whole world, right? Mm -hmm. But the kingdom is not the whole world. There will be a gate. So you may be in the reign. He says you will be called least in the reign of the heavens. You may be out there somewhere, but you're not going to be in the kingdom because you cannot get in the kingdom without being obedient to his commands. He says, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the reigns of the heavens. This is important. Everyone wants to cling to the New Testament, and you, cling you may, but, but it is a complete, everything in the New Testament is a fulfillment of the Old Testament. So unless you've read the Old Testament, you are not going to understand what's in the New Testament, which is also called the Brit Hadashah. Uh, he said, you heard it said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. And here's what Yahushua is saying. He said, but I say to you that whoever is wroth with his brother without a cause shall be liable to judgment. What, what is he saying here? If you're even mad. Yeah, if you even think about it or, or think about like, oh, man, uh, that person... Oh, man, I, just, I hate him right now. When you, when you think, even the thought is a sin. That's exactly it. That's basically it. So, so does it sound like he came to do away with anything? No. no. He came to take a physical law and he turned it into a spiritual, spiritual. law. Oh. If you even think it, if you even look at that guy's car like you were to steal it, guess what? You just stole his car. If you look at that woman like you're like, ooh, she's hot. I want her. You just adultery. committed adultery. So, guys... He, Yahusha, our Savior, took it and he changed it completely into something that's even harder to take care of than just the physical laws, right? Uh, so, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be liable to the Sanhedrin, but whoever says, you fool, shall be li liable to the fire of, of uh, Gehenna, Geh 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 I can't say that. Gehenna, it's the Gehenna Valley. The fires where they burned all the trash in the Gehenna Valley. So you're going to be liable to the fire of Gehenna. Guys, listen. We have got to change the way we think. And, and this is what our study is about today. The love of Yah. This is the kind of love we have to have. We have to get away from lust. And, and um, he goes on in, in this chapter to to tell you about the looking on of a woman. He tells you how, how he is not done with the law, away with the law. So however you, what you want to say, and I really took a rabbit's film. You're supposed to be here to stop me from going on those no, rabbit but trails. He was, he, Oi. he was good. And uh, the thing is, <laughs> we're supposed to love like the Father loves us. That's how we're supposed to love. Mm -hmm. 
one another. And um, that's why he was sitting here to be an example on how to live out the way we're supposed to live. Did you ever see, no, we did see Yahushua get mad one time, mm -hmm. right? And he probably, he may have gotten mad more than anger. that. It was a righteous anger for his what? For his father. It was for his father's yeah. house. Yes. What did he, he went through there and he overturned the tables and he said, you bunch of thieves and robbers. Yep. This is not what his house was for. His house is a house of what? Worship. Worship and prayer. So imagine what he's thinking when he's saying, seeing all these people say, oh, the law is done away with. Who, who did John say he is? Look at John 1.1. 1, 1. Who is John? I'm not talking about John the, the baptizer. He was brother of uh, James. Okay. Did Yahushua <laughs> say, I love this man? He loved, he loved John so much that while he was on the stake, he looked down at John and his mom, Yahushua's mom, and he said, Woman, you see this son, this man? He is now your son. And, son. and brother, you see this woman? She's now your mom. This is how much he loved John. They were besties. It was his favorite. Right? You got a bestie. Is it Bailey? You've got horrible taste. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, it's his little sister. I love her. I'm kidding. Joking. Boy, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. Oh, I already got hate, hate emails right now. Hate comments. No, I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is what the beloved of of Yahushua says. Oh, there's our Valerie. That's not what Yahushua said. Our John. Hello, is Mark on? Mm -hmm. Hey, Mark, I've oh. never met you, man. One day. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what John says of our Savior. John knows. John knows who he is. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. He was in the beginning with Elohim in all. Everything you see, every person you see, every tree you see, every piece of dirt you see, all came to be, let's see here, all came to be through him, and without him, not even one came to be that came to be. Listen, he is a very memory, he's a very fabric that holds everything in this world in place. Even Shaul, beloved Paul, who wrote Second Corinthians, this is the second letter he wrote that we're going to be studying today, even he tells us he is the fabric that holds everything together. Well, what happens when you start trampling on the fabric? What happens when you start ripping and let it get torn? What happens? It's going to tear, right? Mm -hmm. Is it any wonder that we're having hundreds of earthquakes a day, that we're having volcanoes that are beginning to erupt even in the Yellowstone area? And there are things that we can't talk about on here because I already got my hands banged once. And Valerie, if I say something, we love you. Please sh shake your fist at me or something. <laughs> But, but we, we have to be careful what we say, but the very fabric that holds everything together is beginning to fall apart because we've turned our back on him. So we've turned our back on him, and guess what? What do most of the people say? We don't have to obey those laws they've been done away with. Oy, how, how, how much worse could it be? How much more bad could you do to the Torah, to the memory, to the very word of Yah, besides turn your back on him and say you don't have to obey him? If he's our father, if he's our father who is jealous for our love, shouldn't we be obeying him? Yes. Why is it that we feel like we don't have to obey him? We don't have to obey daddy. Our older brother already did it. He already did everything we have to do. We don't have to do anything. If we love him, we will be obedient. Yahushua says that. If you love me, you'll obey my commands. Which commands did he give us? All of them. He gave us all of them. Okay, let's start. Okay. And, uh, yes, thank you so much. I love that you reminded me. So we prayed before. I told Seth, I said, I'm going to forget. So we're going to pray. And um, I've got some friends that we need to pray for. And, guys, if y'all have anyone that we need to pray over, please pray, okay? Abba, y'all, Father, we love you so very much. We, we, we love this day. We get to spend it with you. We don't have to work. We don't have to spend money. We don't have to think about anything but your word. And, Father, this is precious to us and father this time that we get to spend with you alone abba it's precious it's just precious time that we can never go back and get so abba from 
sunset on, on Friday till sunset on, on Shabbat, we're yours. And you you are there to hear us and to talk with us and to commune back and forth. And we praise you for that. Father, we thank you for all the miracles we've seen this week, Father. Father, we thank you for Susan's surgery going so well. Yes. Father, um, we just praise you. We, I think it was a miracle that Valerie made it to Arkansas in all the bad weather she went on Thursday. So, Father, thank you for her safe passage. Abba, um, I've got a friend, Randy Waters. Father, um, I'm just praying over him. Father, he's got pancreatic cancer that he's winning the battle right now. But, Father, we're asking that you will go in, change his body, change everything about his body. Make those cigarettes taste awful to him, Father. <laughs> he's going to really hate me for this. Uh, make the cigarettes not even taste right. Take them away from him, Father, and let his, his pancreas heal, help his body heal, help that tumor shrink. Father, they, they said that it's wrapped around his pancreas and his arteries like fingers. Father, remove those fingers from that tumor. Remove the tumor, Father. Let there not even be a need for surgery. And Father, we praise you because we've seen people be healed. And it's you. It's only you, Father. It's nothing else. So, Father, we, I, we just praise you today. We thank you for your word that we get to study. It's, it's our privilege, not, not, not only what we were created to do, but it's our privilege to, to be able to dive into your word and study your word and find out who you are and who you made us to be. That is a privilege for us. And to know that you're jealous for our love, Father, that just makes me excited that someone loves me so much that they're jealous for my love. We should be jealous for yours in the same way. So, Father, we just praise you and we worship you. Father, we pray over all the churches in our area. Father, we're praying that truth will just knock the doors down, that the Spirit of truth, which is our Savior, will knock the doors down, Father, and just invade these churches. Father, we pray for the, the pastors in these churches. Father, open them up, wake them up, fill them with the knowledge and the understanding of who you really are, Father of who you really are. You are one. You are a cod. You are one. And you, you have come to us in physical form as Yahusha, and you stay with us in the spiritual form as the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit. Abba Yah, we thank you. We thank you that you've never left us as orphans. We're not here by ourselves. You're here with us. You strengthen us. You fill us with your knowledge and the wisdom of who you are. Abba, Thank you. We praise you today. Guys, anyone else? Oh, well, yeah, thank you for today. Thank you for watching over his father. <clears throat> father, continue to work with each and every one of us, Father, and um, and just help us live out your ways and your will. And help us be light to others that uh, don't have your word, Father. Help us, uh, help us get to the point to where we can just speak your word in every situation that we're in, Father whether it's somebody grumbling that we can bring light to you, bring the light to them, Father, where they don't need to grumble, Father, and just help us to not turn to the left or the right, mm. just to stay on your path. Mm. And um, just uh, keep continuing uh, healing the people that need to be healed, Father, like Randy Waters, that's a horrible thing, Father. Just put a hedge of protection around him and his wife, and just uh, we're asking for a healing in him, Father. And we're also asking for a hedge of protection around Valerie and her mother, she just had knee surgery, Father. Just uh, watch over them. Give her a knee up in the way that you want her to be healed, Father, to where she can walk freely and not have to worry about any pain whatsoever. Father, we love you. We thank you. And help us be the vessel that you need. Fill us with your words and fill us with your Ruach, not ours and not Satan's. Yes. We love you and we thank you. And bless your holy name in the precious name of your Son, who shall pray this. Oh, Father, I just come to you today. Father, I just thank you for this wonderful day that we're able to spend with you. Father, I pray that you would forgive me for I have fallen short this week and just help me to just be a better person and um, to get through the conviction that I'm going through that today. And Father, I just thank you for um, always watching over us and protecting us and giving us what we need. Uh, Father, I do ask that you be with Val and uh, her mom, Susan. And Father, I just ask that you would protect her and Father, get her through her recovery quickly, Father. And um, Father, I just ask that you would place your healing hands over her, Father. Um, Father, I thank you for everything that you've done. And Father, I ask that 
throughout the Shabbat that you would just um, open up our eyes and our hearts and Father help us to see the things that you need us to see and what you need us to work on Father Father I thank you for um, continuing to take care of us throughout all of us throughout this the snow the ice mm-hmm. that we went through Father thank you for that thank you that none of us got severely hurt or anything Father that we've always had food to eat Father um, I'm grateful that we've had electricity the whole time. I know some people did it, and Father, I ask that you be with Benito and uh, Melinda, because I know that they didn't have electricity or water or something. Father, I ask that you would just be with them. Uh, Father, I be with the Oak Leaves. Father, um, protect them, and uh, on this day, as they worship you and just draw them near yes, to you, Father, and then we thank you for that. Father, so I just love you and I thank you and I bless your holy name and precious name of your son. Father, change us. Change us every day into what you want us to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, Abba, we love you. We praise you and thank you for being in this room today with us. In the precious name of Yahushua Hamashiach, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. So, so guys, let's just get started. You want to do it? Let's do it. Okay, we're starting in 2 Corinthians. <laughs> I'm in 1 Corinthians. We already did that. <sighs> that was like a month ago, two months ago. Was it? That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Okay, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I, Shaul, which is Paul, myself appeal to you through the meekness and gentleness of Messiah. I, who am indeed lowly when face to face with you, but bold towards you when absent. He writes fiery letters, doesn't he? And we've, we've been reading his fiery letters because Romans was from Shaul. First and second Corinthians were from, from Shaul. And these are all letters that he's written to the Romans and the Corinthians, right? And he's addressing issues that they've written to him. Uh, One day, I think we'll get to see, when we get into the kingdom, we'll get to see the letters that were sent to him that he was responding to. But guys, what we have to remember, and this is for our live streamers, Shaul, Paul, was a rabbi. He graduated from um, under class with Gamaliel as a rabbi, knowing the Torah by heart and the Tanakh. I mean, he knew the whole Old Testament. But he also, under Gamaliel, what else was he taught? The Talmud. The Talmud, which is what the Pharisees came up with to try to keep everyone in line, to try to keep, help them to keep the commandments. We don't need any extra writing, so the Word tells us, don't add to or take away from, right? They added to, eh? So the Talmud is what Shaul, throughout his writing, says, those are done away with. But the Torah was never done away with because it's simple. Yahushua tells us himself, take on my burden. Is it light or heavy, Grant? It's light. It's light. It's easy. Okay, so he's telling us, when I'm not with you, I'm sending you fiery letters. But when I come to you, I seem meek. But he's going to tell them, I am not meek. He said, but I pray that when I'm present, I might not be bold with that bravery that, that by which I think to be bold against someone who reckons us as if we walked according to the flesh. So what he's telling them is we walk out the Torah. We walk out. This is a word that that is actually in the Aramaic uh, English New Testament. It's the word halakha. And basically it means it's the totality of the laws and ordinances to regulate our observances and our daily life and conduct our lives as his people. It's the way we walk out to our guys. It's the way we live. So he's telling them, I walk out Holocaust. I'll walk out his regulations. I'll, I'll walk out his laws. This is what we should be saying. We walk out his laws. We are Torah observant people, aren't we? Now, are we completely right on everything we're doing? I'm sure we're not. We're learning and we're growing, and this is a walk. So we change daily. Every week I find out something new. I find out something new and I find out something different, and I'm like, oh, will we ever stop learning? I pray not. I pray that we continue to learn every single week. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, 
We do yes. not fight according to the flesh. How do we fight, guys? We fight according to Yah. According to Yah, how do we fight? With the word. This is our sword. The word is our sword. Ephesians 6. He tells us how to fight. He, he, he provides us with the sword. He provides us with, well, let's just go there. Go to Ephesians 6. You're already there? You're already there? You want to come up here and read it for me? I'm going to put you on camera, girl. Because I'm still looking. I'm still it's looking. on page 1141. Thank you. There it is. Okay, Ephesians 6, read it um, in, starting in 10. Okay. For the rest, my brothers, be strong in the master and in the mightiness of his strength. Put on the complete armor of Elohim for you to have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of the wickedness in the heavenlies. What does this mean? It, I'm not coming against people. We're not coming against people. Guys, who are people influenced by? Hasatan. Yeah, Thank you, Sherry. Spirit. It's it's the spirit of Satan. Yeah. It's the evil principalities of this world. When we go to fight, it's not against people, guys. We were all there. I was there. I was part of a an assembly, a church. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, hey, once saved... I don't have to do anything else. I'm saved. Saved forever. I can live however I want. Do whatever I want. I didn't do a whole lot outside of the Word. But I, could, I thought I could. And everybody else thinks they can. They lie. They cheat. They sleep with other men's wives. Right? Outside of their own marriage. And they're accepted back into the church as if nothing's happened. This is not the way it's supposed to be. This is the, the battle we're fighting. It's not against these people. It's against the principalities, the authorities, the rulers that have so twisted the word that they don't know what's truth anymore. Okay? That's why this is our sword and our shield. You're fixing to tell us all about it. Go for it. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day and having done all to stand. Stand then, having girded your waist with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So it's truth. Yeshua. Our Savior's true. Who is he also? He's the Torah. He's mm -hmm. a word. He's a living, walking, talking, breathing word of Yah. So he says, having girded your waist with truth, put on our Savior. As listen, as we're walking out, out his truth, his Torah, we should begin looking like who? Yeshua. Like him. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. How do you obtain righteousness? Deuteronomy 6.25 is your righteousness when you guard and do all of his commands. That's, a, that's the righteousness. That's like, almost, that's like covering your heart. Yes. And our heart is wicked. Oh, it needs to be changed, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All of our hearts. Okay, good job. I don't know what that was. <laughs> and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace. Above all, having taken up the shield of belief, with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. Hold on. All I have to do is believe? Well, just to believe? There's a... You have to do action. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Belief okay. is doing. Belief is what? In action. action. An action word. If I believe you, I'm going to act. Mm -hmm. if, you tell, if you call me and go, Vicki, there is a tornado coming your way. What am I going to do? Go outside and watch for it? No, I'm going to take shelter. Well, Shay's going to go outside and watch for it. <laughs> so are you. I, well, I, yeah, I, you <laughs> I do. I go, I'll, I'll go out there and watch for it. When I see it, I'll be like, take cover, everybody. <laughs> well, some of us are watchmen, right, Shay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we tell everybody else, take cover, take cover. So if I believe you, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what you're telling me to do, right? If, you, if we believe Yahushua, if we believe in him and his words, we're going to what? Do what he's do telling it. us to do. Boy, yep. okay. Okay. Take also the helmet of deliverance and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim. Praying at all times with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching in all perseverance and supplication for all the set apart ones. Ooh, we should be praying for each other mm -hmm. constantly. And 
I'm finding myself doing that more and more now. Are you? Yeah, I've heard, I like praying for other people because I feel like that's what I need to be doing. I don't always pray for other people, though, Like, but I get convicted, and I'll be like, man, I really need to pray for others more. So, guys, listen, anytime y'all puts someone on your heart or in your mind, that person may be struggling with something spiritual that day. Yes. Stop and pray for them. I, I find that throughout the day, if he brings someone, I stop and I pray for them right then. I mean, it, we can't wait. No. This is not a day or a time for us to wait and, oh, I'll pray for him tonight. It's time to stop. If he's putting them on your heart, it's for a reason. Okay. Yeah, because I think about it like this, like, I also need prayer. Yes. You know what I mean? I also need, I need that prayer, especially in this group. When I text the group and I'm like, pray for me, I, I know that you guys will. Yes. You know, so I feel like it is important to pray for others. Okay. It's 19. Also for me, that a word might be given to me in the opening of my mouth to be bold in making known the secret of the good news. What is the secret of the good news? Is it that Yahushua came, he died, and he took all of your sins, and you don't ever have to do anything except say you accept me as your Savior? Is no. that the good news? No. That's not the secret that, that Shaul has come to tell us. He's telling us the secret is, if you repent, if you teshuva, if you turn back to Yah with all your heart and mind and soul, and you do what's right, which is doing all of his righteousness, then have the the testimony of Yahushua yep. as well. What? And the Torah of Moshe. The Torah of Moshe. There, thank you. The Torah of Moshe and the testimony of Yahushua. Those two things get you through the gate, which walking out Torah is having the Torah of Moshe, being obedient to his word. So that is a great news, but it's also, it goes deeper than that. And we're not going to go there today, but when he died, he died as a bridegroom so the house of Israel could come back home and could become the bride of Yahushua. Okay. Thank you, Bethany. You're welcome. Well, bye. Bye. Oh, he didn't want to be here. Here no more. Okay. <laughs> Have we got an emergency bra? <laughs> okay, so um, we're in verse 5, overthrowing reasonings. Okay, listen to this. For the weapons we fight with are not fleshly, but they're mighty in Elohim for overthrowing strongholds. Are strongholds physical? They can be. But the majority, a stronghold is a spiritual stronghold. Yeah. Over, overthrowing strongholds, overthrowing reasonings. Who has twisted the reasoning that's in our churches today? Say it. Hasatan. Hasatan. And the seminaries. <clears throat> he's used pastors. He's used men with knowledge to teach our pastors the wrong ideas, which is just the New Testament and twisted to the way they want it to look. Using just Paul's letters, guys, you can't use Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You can't use James. You can't use First, Second, or Third John or any of Peter's writings. You can't use any of these to support the grace theory. I'm sorry. That's okay. Was it the oven? No, it's the propane fuel. Oh. It just keeps spinning. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Do we need to take it outside before it explodes? I don't know. Has it got a leak? Okay. Be good. Okay. Sherry. What a, Sherry. Day, what a day we can go on, all right? Sherry and I are like, whoa. Okay, it's good. Okay. And every high matter that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim. What kind of high matters are exalting themselves against the knowledge and the wisdom of Elohim? What is the knowledge and the wisdom of Elohim? It's all contained in the front of the book. Yes. And in the back. It's the instructions on how to but walk it But the instructions on how to walk it out are in the front of the book. Yep. Who's done away with that? Who would do that? Uh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Satan. It wasn't me. Satan twist Yah's words every single time. This is what this is what the enemy is. It's Satan twisting the words. Okay. Um, and well, let me see. So every thought to make it obedient to Messiah and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. 
So what Sean is saying here is that until you're completely obedient, we're not going to punish you. You don't know what's right from wrong, right? You don't know how to walk. You're just learning. You're like a baby. What do babies eat? Milk? Pablum? That mushed Pablum. up? Is that mushed up food? Pablum, Pablum is... Ugh. Pa it sounds, Sweet peas, It is carrots. what it sounds like. Yeah, it's mushed up food. Like peaches and... Yeah. Mushed up. Okay. Yeah. okay, it's not like putting a peach in your mouth. It's like eating mushed up food. Because why? Their bodies cannot handle the steak, can't handle whole vegetables. Because this is a spiritual sense that he's talking about here, too. Steak. Steak and potatoes, right? That's what we like. Right. Okay, because why? Because we're on the deeper things of y'all. Yes. We're not stuck on the, the small things like... The, the Ten Commandments, honoring Shabbat, don't eat the things that aren't food. Don't put things in your mouth that aren't food. You know, it, it would be like, why would we have to re remind somebody, excuse me, but that's not food. Don't put it in your mouth. It's going to make you sick. It's going to give you cancer. It's going to give you heart disease. Oh, my. It's going to give you a heart attack. Why do we have to tell people this when y'all told them that in Leviticus 11, guys, which is where the food law is. So... It's all these things that we've done away with that bring what? Long-lasting life, right? Yes. It says, if you honor your mother and father, you will have prolonged days. If you honor your mother and father, your days will be prolonged. There's a blessing behind the obedience to actually all of the commands, but that one comes with a specific <clears throat> blessing. Your life will be lengthened. Guys, doing kind things for other people, also what? It, Link, lengthens your life. And it covers and over it blesses your... blesses you. It covers a number of sins. It covers a number of sins. When you do good for others without an <coughs> uh, ulterior motive, Yes. it covers over sins. Okay? So we've got, we have got to change the way we're doing everything, the way we love each other, and this afternoon, guess what we're getting into? Grumbling. Grumbling. Moaning and grumbling and being upset about everything, right? Okay. Um, so take a look at what you are facing. If, I'm in uh, verse 7. If anyone seems to trust in himself that he is a Messiah, let him reckon again for himself that, if, that as he is of Messiah, so also are we. So we're all walking in Messiah, right? For even if I should boast somewhat, about our authority, which the Master gave us for building up and not for overthrowing you, I shall not be put to shame, lest I seem to frighten you away by letters. So he's saying his letters seemed a little bit weighty. It says in here in verse 8, it says the authority to build you up, not tear you down. I like the way that puts yeah. that. In here, in the... Ain't. In the ain't book... <laughs> It says, for he gave it to us for your edification, not for your destruction. So, wow. So, if we take what the complete Jewish Bible and the Aramaic Bible say, y'all gave us the word, and I'm talking about the front of the, the word, for what? To build you up, to make you strong, to change the way you do things, to change your mindset, to change your heart, that stony heart that Bethany was talking about a while ago, the evil heart, to change everything that we do. And to keep you from being what? Destroyed. Destroyed, yes. Why? Wait, mean why? Why is he doing that? Because he wants to spend eternal life with us. He, he wants to spend us. He wants to spend eternal life with us. And we're going to actually read in a little bit about that eternal life. Yeah, but that's going to be the second. So many books, so many notes. There's so many books and so many notes and so, so much good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna read uh, from here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start. Where was I, eleven? In verse eight. Verse eight. <laughs> or you were nine. I'm sorry. But I forbear, or else I should be thought to frighten you greatly by my epistles, his letters, for there are some who say his letters are weighty and forcible, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. They hated the way he spoke. Guys, when he came to them, because he was what? 
He was saying, you're not living right. Mm -mm. I hear that someone is sleeping with their wife and everybody, this is what he said in one of his last letters, and everybody's welcome him into the assembly. Put him out. Deal with this. You don't allow, listen, a little leavening will what? It'll destroy the whole. The whole bread. The whole, the whole bowl. Well, it will destroy everything. Well, I mean, you got to think about how they did, how they treated uh, Yeshua too. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, hey, come on in. You know, they were. He wouldn't like me either. No, he, he wasn't. He wanted him dead. Why? Because he was speaking truth. He was speaking truth. They were over here trying to make sure that nobody opened their door on Shabbat to hand a needy person outside food. And Yahushua saying, this is not what the laws are about. This is not what the Shabbat is about. Yeah. You do good for others on Shabbat. If, you, if, if someone's in need, you help them on Shabbat. Yes, yes, yes. But it's not about just going into your house. Listen, guys, we're not supposed to be hiding away and hiding the light that he's given you. You're all lights. You're yeah. salt and light. And the salt sometimes rubs people wrong. That's what Yahushua was. He was salt. Mm -hmm. He rubbed people wrong. It burned. Does it feel good when, when you're telling somebody that they're not walking right? It, but he did it, and he did it with love. That's the way our Father does it. Yes. But, but we're not meant, we were not created to hide away in the woods and not be among people. We, that's not what he made us for. We are here to spread his news. That's what we're here for. I'm, some people don't want to hear that because they want to hide away and stay there. That's not what we're here for. Verse 11, but let him who says so consider this, that such as we are in our epistolary discourse, which is his letters, when absent, such also we are in action when present. We're the same, whether through letter or in the physical. For we dare not compare ourselves with those who exalt themselves, but they, because they compare themselves with themselves, are not wise. That would be like us sitting here going, aren't we great? Mm -hmm. No, you're supposed to say uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're so great. Looks, we're comparing ourselves to each other. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm doing so good. How about you? I'm, I'm Way better than me, right? So he's saying, <laughs> they're not very smart. These are not the most intelligent people. Woo woo. But we will not glory beyond our measure, but within the measure of the limits which Elohim has imparted to us, that we should reach as far as you. For we do not stretch ourselves as if not reaching to you, for we do reach as far as you in the hope of the Mashiach. And we do not glory beyond our measure in the toil of others. So other people are working, and he says, we're not glorying ourselves of what they're doing, but we have the hope that when your faith will mature, we will be magnified by you as being within our measure. So everything that they're doing, they're doing to help the people around them grow. That's what they're doing when they go to Corinth. Is they're helping the Corinthians grow and mature in what? Yeah. In the Word. Yeah. In the Word of Yah. To grow nearer to Him, to grow closer to Him, to come more obedient to His commands. Uh, in 16, And that we do so abound also as to make announcements beyond you. It is not in the measure of others. And in the things ready prepared that we will glory. But let him that will glory, glory in Master Yahweh. For it is not he who praises himself who is approved, but he whom Master Yahweh praises. Guys, when's that, when's that going to take place? Is it on this physical plane? No. Listen, when are we going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? And that's why I pray that we all hear when we what? When we get to when we get to the door, when we arrive there to our Messiah, who is the door that we have to go through, you're not going to get any other way. You can get to the door through your righteousness, through your walking out Torah, but you're not getting through that door unless you have the testimony of Yahushua. Walking as he walked and having the testimony that he died and he was raised for the sins that we could never make atonement for, ever. We can never make atonement for our rebellion, for our lying, our cheating, our stealing, our murdering. Listen, you, you're you angry at someone, you've murdered them. If you were mad enough to go bop them on the head, you're, you're probably guilty of murder. These are sins that, that brought about what? 
the death sentence. You didn't just get your hands spanked. These were death sentences. There is nothing we can do to atone for that. It is only through the blood of our Messiah that we get that. And so through our Master Yahushua, through His praises, when we get there and He tells us, well done, good and faithful servant, it means that you have been able to walk this out. You've been able to... We have to take control over this, our tongue, which in it carries the, the power of life and death. We have to take care of this, our heart, which is full of evil, evil thoughts in our head. Guys, our brain, our heart, our tongue, our tongue reveals everything that's in our heart. And sometimes I'm wondering if my heart is not totally black by what has poured out of my mouth before. And Abba, we repent for those things that we have said. Yes. But, but, but guys, if you're thinking those thoughts, it's still there. We need We've got to. We, we cannot wait. This is a day that we've got to change that. We've got to hand it over to him, let him take it away. Guys, if it's for an ex-friend, an ex-spouse, for our children, for our parents. Not everyone has had great parents that they can look up to and that they can say, Oh, I love my father, Yah, Abba Yahweh, just as I love my earthly father. Not everyone can say that. Not everyone had that kind of father that they could look up to. They don't know the unconditional love. So we've got to get past all that. We've got to repent of that. We've got to throw it. Look, we've got to lay it on the altar and let y'all take care of it. It's not ours. If we are here for one thing, and that's to draw near to him and help those around us draw near to him, we don't have time to, to deal with the pettiness of jealousy, of ugliness, of hatefulness. We've got to get rid of it. We've got, to, we've got to get to the place that we love like y'all loves. And it's not this petty bitterness. Oh, I saw you talking to so-and-so. Oh, I saw. But he is jealous. He is a jealous God. And it's jealous like pink is. We're going we're gonna to read something that's in the back of this book in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and finish 11. And then I want to read that to you. Because the... the Aramaic English Bible puts it in a way that I've never seen it put, and I really like it. In chapter 11, verse 1, I would that you bear with me little, that I might talk foolishly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with a righteous jealousy. For I have espoused you to a husband as a chaste virgin, whom I would present to the Messiah, Mashiach. Guys, do you know what he's saying right here? How does it say it in the complete Jewish? He says, I would, I would like to bear with you, um, excuse me, I would like to bear, excuse me, I would like you to bear with me in a little foolishness. Please do bear with me, for I am a jealous for you with God's kind of jealousy, since I promised to present you as a pure virgin in marriage to your own, to want to your one husband, the Messiah. And I fear that somehow your minds may be seduced away from simple and pure devotion to the Messiah, just as Hava uh, was deceived by the serpent and his craftiness. And Hava is who? Eve. Eve. Okay, how does it say it in the, the Scriptures Bible? I wish that you would bear with me in a little folly, but indeed you are bearing with me. For I am jealous for you with a jealousy according to Elohim. For I gave you in marriage to one husband to present you as an innocent maiden to Messiah. But I am afraid lest, as the serpent deceived Huwa by, the, by his trickery, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Messiah. So... This love that he has for the Corinthians that he's talking to, it says a parent, as a mother and father. In the Hebrew uh, culture, who gave the, who, who, who arranged for the marriage? Mom and dad. Mom and dad would, would arrange for both Grant and Bailey's marriage. That's how, that's how it worked. He's saying, I'm jealous over you as a father is. And this is why he's saying a godly love, a, a, a love like Elohim has, a righteous jealousy, because I want only the good things for you. For I have espoused you to a husband who's our bridegroom, Yahusha. 
Could he be the bridegroom if he had divorced the house of Israel? No. So he's a new bridegroom, isn't he? Because he died. He's been raised as a new bridegroom to a chaste virgin. Guys, listen. We pray, and I've heard people pray this, that God will prepare them. Oh, y'all, prepare me to be the bride. What, is, what does the word tell us? Prepare yourself. The virgins have to prepare themselves. What, what were the virgins doing when the, they were waiting for the bridegroom to come? And let, let me tell you, this is how the, the marriage worked in Hebrew. You have to understand, these are Hebrews who are writing this. So the parents would arrange the marriage between John and Jane. John and Jane are, Jane are going to get married. There's a dowry that was paid. There is a ketuvah that is entered into an agreement, a marriage contract that tells everything that's going to take place. If, if John is not right to Jane, this is what takes place. There is a ketuvah, a, a marriage agreement that is signed. Who keeps it? The bride's parents take care of it. They keep it in a safe place in case John runs off. Well, we've got the paper here. So when they present their daughter to be married to John, she's supposed to be set apart and holy, right? The chaste virgin. Yah doesn't prepare her. She has to prepare herself. Yah strengthens her. He gives her the heart to prepare herself. But she has to make choices through life to be the woman of Yah. Guys, that's where we are. Just as we do, we have to be there for the There Messiah. you go. There you go. We have to, yeah. yeah. So if we're preparing ourselves for the bridegroom, can he marry, can holy and set apart marry profane? No. Cannot. Can I have anything to do with it? Can the profane and the holy be equally yoked? No. Not at all. You have to yoke holy with holy. If it's profane, let the profane go be yoked with the profane, right? They're going to walk the same way. The holy are not going to walk the same as the unholy. You have to be equally yoked. So he, he's telling them, I'm presenting you, all of you, not just the, the bride. I'm presenting all of you as this perfect, holy, set-apart woman, bride, because we're all going to be brides. Even you guys, I know it sounds weird, but you're going to be Yahusha's bride. I'll be bride. We're going to be married. You, I can't even see you in a little veil. Or, uh. <laughs> Knock on my door. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to have nightmares. You. <laughs> okay, so, so do you see how much Shaul is telling these people, these Corinthians, that he loves them? It, this is with a, a, a love that only y'all can have. He said, but I fear or else as a serpent deceived Eve by his cleverness. So your mind should be corrupted from the sincerity that is in the Mashiach. Guys, walking out Torah is very simple. It's very easy. There's nothing complicated about it. But what does a, Satan come along and do? Oh, wait, he already did it, didn't he? You don't have to be under that. Are you really under those laws? Did he really tell you to do that? Did he really? Did he really say I didn't come to do away with those laws? Hmm. Let's just read that verse and don't go any farther. Because if you do, you're going to see fullness of truth. Listen, anybody who's studying the Word of Yah and they're blinded by the the spirit of religion, they're hanging on to what the seminary has taught. And they can't get out of it. Our prayer is that they find someone who will lead them out of it. That someone comes along, that y'all will pierce their heart. Y'all has to call everyone who follows him. He has to make the call. You can go up to someone who you've been praying for years, will will find y'all. But it, it's not their time. It's not their time. And your, ear, your words are going to fall on deaf ears. And it's not just going to fall on deaf ears. It's going to make them what? Not like, like hate it more. They're going to bow up. They're going to resent. And when they see you coming down the street, they're going to go, oi. Run. They're going to go the other direction. They're, they're going to go out of their way to, to, to stop, keep from seeing you. Run. 
sorry. I've got all this music over here in my ear. Okay, verse 4. For if he that comes to you had proclaimed to you another Yeshua, should we have not proclaimed? Or if you had received another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well have given your permission. Guys, listen, another Yehusha or another Yeshua or another Messiah would be the one who, who did away with the law. He is the law. He cannot do away with the law, right? He's not going to do that. That would be teaching you a different Mashiach. He, it would be teaching you the lawless Mashiach. Do you hear what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I may get a lot of bad comments there, but if we're talking about the lawless one, that's a problem, isn't it? I'm just saying, I'm telling you, don't be confused by pastors who don't understand the word. Verse 5, for I suppose I did not come short of these, those shlikum teachers who excel the most. For though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but in all things, we have been revelatory among you. Does your say anything different? Or does it make it a little bit clearer? Number five. It's number right? six. Let's see. I'm sorry. I may not be a skilled speaker, but I have the knowledge. But I do have the knowledge. Anyhow, we made this clear to you in every way, in every circumstance. So it, it make, making it clear to them, the word, the gospel, that the Messiah is the word. This is what he's making clear to them. Did I, I am in mean seven, did I indeed commit an offense by humbling myself that you might be exalted and by proclaiming the good news of Elohim to you freely? And I robbed other assemblies and I took pay for uh, from other ministries for ministering to you. And when I came among you and was needy, I was burdensome to none of you. For the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs, and in all things I kept myself, and I will keep myself from being burdensome to you. As the truth of the Mashiach is in me, the, this glorifying will not be made vain as to me in the regions of Achaia. So he's saying, I came to you, and he's, last week he was talking about the tithing and the generosity of the Macedonians, right? That even though they were very poor, they provided so much for these guys who were in Corinth, for the ministry, that they didn't have to worry, and they didn't have to burden the, the people of, Mas of Corinthia. He says, why? Because I do not love you. The Elohim knows. But what I do, that also I do, I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them who seek occasion, so that in the thing that they glory, they may be found even as we. For they are false apostles, crafty workers, and pretend apostles of the Mashiach. Guys, we are surrounded by those today. Does your say something better? Yes, this is 12. No, I do it. And we'll go on doing it in order that well, in order to cut the ground from under those who want an excuse to boast that they work the same as we do the fact is, is oh good i'm sorry no you're doing good in 14 it says if this if this that excuse me and in this there is nothing strange for if satan pretends to be a messenger of light which he did right it is no great thing if his ministers pretend to be ministers of righteousness mm -hmm. whose end will be according to their works. What are they teaching? You don't have to keep the law. There's no rules or regulations or instructions for you to keep. All you have to do is love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and your neighbor as yourself. Can you keep those without keeping all of the other commands? You can't. If you're able to, then you're keeping the other commands. I can tell you that. Because if you love him, you shall guard his commands. If you love him, you're going to guard. You're not just going to guard his commands. You're going to love his commands. Because that's what we were born to do. We were born to live out and walk out his Torah. And Because what is this walk? What is this? Where, where are we going on this walk? To the kingdom. We're going back home, guys. We're going to the kingdom. We're going back home. This is a promise that he made to Adam. 6,000 years ago, 
after 6,000 years, and he was telling him at that time after 5,500 years, because it sounds like he had been probably 500 years in the in Eden. After 5,500 years, I'm bringing you back home, but you got to spend 5,500 years. We're all Adam. We're all from that seed. He was the first seed. We're all from his seed. We all sinned. We've all fallen short. I don't care how long you've been on this walk. You fall short because we we're we're stuck Flesh. in we're stuck in this. And how would you like to be stuck in that? Yikes! <laughs> this is lovely. <laughs> this is the bride. Hey, you want me to start the movie? Huh? Yeah, that'd be crazy. Okay, we'll be right. Go ahead and do it. Right, do it. Oh, that's so close. But come back up here so I want you to yeah, yeah. hear the ain't. Hey. You ain't. What? You ain't. In 15, it is no great thing if his ministers pretend to be ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. Because what did we read in Matthew earlier? What did he say? Those who teach. Those who do and teach others to break his commands shall be called the least. They shall be called the least in the kingdom or in the reign, in the reign of the heavens. Returning to what I say, let no one think of me as being a fool, or if otherwise receive me as a fool that I may boast a little. What I am now saying, I say not in our master Yeshua, but as in folly in this matter of glorifying. It's like he's joking about, somebody must have been saying, oh, he thinks he's something hot, he's really not that smart, look at him, he's weak in speech and presence, he's nothing strong, because he's saying, I'm kind of joking about the boasting, right? We shouldn't be boasting, none of us should be boasting, because many boast after the flesh, I, I also will boast, for you hear with indulgence them who lack reason, seeing you are wise, and you give ear to him who puts you in bondage, and to him who devours you, and to him who takes from you, and to him who exalts himself over you, and to him who strikes you in the face. Guys, <clears throat> I can't explain, but when I was in religion, I was in bondage. But when I started walking out Torah, I'm free. D did you feel that same way, Shay? I think so. Did you? I wasn't religious before. Sherry, how about you? Yeah. This, this is the most freeing thing that I've ever seen. That's what Yahushua says. He says, you know, my burden is light. It's easy. It's actually, you know why it's freeing? Because you have to start letting go of those thoughts of anger, those thoughts of hatred, those thoughts of bitterness, jealousy. When you start letting all that stuff go, you are free. You're free to love the way Yah made you to love. And I think that's what I'm seeing. I think the, the strictness in it, I'm not saying okay, that sounds bad. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Um, I need that, the strictness. You know you, what I mean? You, you need the, the order. Yes, yeah. I need that in my life um, as far as, I mean, because I was a drug addict and all. So I need that. Structure. <laughs> That's what it is. Structure. It's structure. Yeah, not just half of the uh, the Bible or a little bit. Or just the front. The whole thing just to make sense to me, and it helps. It really does. But what's what's amazing? Me. We're all addicted to something. Mm -hmm. We've all been addicted to something somewhere along the line. Whether it's addicted to a person, addicted to movies, or addicted to pornography or drugs or alcohol we've all been there addicted to something we all need that same structure yep. we need it we're his children have you seen kids grow up in a house where there's no rules yeah. no regulations yep. Yep. have y'all seen that yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> not my house <laughs> i bet not your house uh, yeah oh one of his friends oh really it, what kind of kids does this raise? Entitled, rebellious. selfish, rebellious, mm -hmm. angry. Angry because, listen, we all need to know that somebody cares enough that they build a fence around us as little kids to keep from running out into the street and being hit by a car. That's what y'all's rules do, do. He built a fence around us to protect us because we're not smart enough. We are not smart enough. 
to understand what is good for us and what's not good for us. That's what a parent does. They build that fence around their yard so that you're not running out into the street chasing a volleyball and get struck. Or run out into the street and somebody grabs you and runs off with you. Y'all loves you with a jealousy that he, he loves you so much that he gave us 613 commandments. Not all of them. We know that. Not all of them are for all of us. He gave them to us so that we can live long and so that we will eventually live with him. And we're going to be reading this this afternoon, but for live streamers, read Psalms 15. This is who he wants to live and spend eternity with. It's Psalms 15. We're going to read that this afternoon because this afternoon is going to be all about grumbling. Today's all about jealousy. Oh, we're doing some changing, aren't we? <laughs> so we've given ear to the, the pastors and to the religions where we've given them tons of money, right? We've paid them lots of money to sit up there and tell us things that make us feel good, right? Are they going to give you long life? No. He said, I speak as if under contempt. I speak as if we were impotent through deficiency of understanding that in whatever thing anyone is presuming, I also am presuming. If you see anything in there, because I'm, I'm in 22 now. Are they Hebrew speakers? So am I. Are they people of Israel? So am I. Are they, oh, you're, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's, no, but if you see anything oh, that, see. That, that, that can clarify. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, th this is some of Paul's really deep writings, and I want us to, to really get the most out of it. If they are Hebrews, that's what you were saying, then so, so am I. If they are Israelites, I am too. If they are of the seed of Abraham, so am I. Guys, listen, so are all of us. If you choose to be covenanted, what are you? You're an Israelite. Because you're under the covenant. You're no longer a Gentile. Those are the nations that are not covenanted. That's what that means. If they are ministers of the Mashiach, in defective understanding, I say it. I am superior to them. In tolls more than they, in stromps more than they, in bonds more than they, in deaths more, in deaths many times. By the Jewish authorities, five times I was scourged, each time with 40 stripes, save one, so 39 stripes. Three times I was bitten with, beaten with, <laughs> with rods. At one time I was stoned. Three times I was in shipwreck. By day and by night I have been in sea without a ship. In many journeys, in peril by rivers, in peril by robbers, in peril from my kindred, in peril from Gentiles. I have been in peril in cities. I have been in peril in the desert, peril in the sea, peril from false brothers. Those who, who say, I'm your brother, and then they turn their back on you. In toil and in weariness and much watching, in hunger and thirst and fasting and cold and in nakedness. Besides many other things and the thronging around me every day and my anxiety for all the assemblies. Who becomes weak? And I did not get weak. Who did? Who is stumbled? I did not burn. If I must boast, I will boast in my sicknesses. Wow. Mm. Guys, he's saying my weaknesses, my sicknesses, and everything that I have done wrong, I'm boasting. This is in 30, and here it says, if I, if I must boast, I will boast about things that show how weak I am. There you go. He's, wow, that's deep. That he's boasting in the things that he hasn't done right. That he needs to work on. That he needs to work on. That's where we need to be. Not boasting about what are we doing right, but what are we still doing wrong? What mm -hmm. do we still need to change? How much more do we need to grow? Yeah. And guys, there's a lot. We got we got a long way to go, but that's okay. Because Yah will strengthen us, and Yah will provide for us, and Yah will guide us. Through his spirit, Elohim, the father of our master, Yeshua, the Mashiach, blessed forever and ever. He knows that I do not lie. At Damascus, the commander of the army of Aretas, the king, guarded the city of Damascus to seize me. And from the window in a basket, they let me down from the wall, and I escaped from his hands. 
Okay, and that's going to end this portion, but but it doesn't really because I'm going to read a little bit more. 867. So, guys, this is so beautiful. Sure. Where are you going? I'm going to page 867, oh, and y'all okay. don't have this, and I'm sorry that y'all don't. So sorry about your luck, but you don't have this. <laughs> this is Jealous Elohim, and it comes from the Aramaic Bible. For, for you shall worship no other Elohim, for Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous Elohim. And that is in Shemot, it's in Exodus 34, 14. There are two types of jealousy revealed in Scripture. Kanar or Kanal, which is the righteous jealousy of Yahweh, and Kanah, which is the, the jealousy common to the fallen world based on lust, based on pride, envy, hate, and insecurity. So guys, as we get away from this earthly plane of jealousy, because these are the things we have to get rid of. Lust, pride, pride. Someone makes you feel little. Hurts our pride, doesn't it? What is that, does that make a difference? It really shouldn't, does it? We know who we are and y'all. Envy, why would we envy going down? Because we're insecure. Why should we hate? Because we're insecure. Why would we allow lust or pride to, to make a difference in us? It's because we're insecure. I should have made copies of this. Yahweh is jealous of his people and vice versa. When we desire the same things that Yahweh desires, it is because Yahweh has put his spirit within and made us into Kodashim, into holy set-apart ones. Whether Jew or Gentile and Really, guys, the Gareem is not a Gareem once he becomes walking as Yah. Uh, so you, he's given some verses here. If we are jealous for what is righteous, then we also must hate evil and all transgressions against Torah, which goes contrary to our spirit. Yahweh's jealousy over his people clearly depicts his desire for an intimate relationship with each soul. Why did he create us, guys? When he created Adam and Tua, Adam and Eve, what was the purpose? To walk with him. What did they do with him in, in the Garden of Eden? This gives me chill bumps. They walked with Abba Yah through the garden. They talked with him. They communed with each other. That's what we were created to do. How far have we fallen from that? Most people don't even go to to the prayer room or on their knees to pray to Abba today. He's jealous. He's jealous for your time. He's jealous for your heart. He most certainly cannot be thought of as a passive father who desires agnostic attitudes towards him when in fact he is a jealous Elohim. Yahweh is one and his name is one. This idea of the Trinity is Roman Catholic. We live in a Greco-Roman world, right? Yeah. Okay, so he's telling us here, he is one. The Shema tells us, Yah is one. He's a God. He's one. He is exclusive, and he does not permit his divine glory to be shared by false authorities. As the architect of life, there is no other creator to be compared to Yahweh. Therefore... You shall not make any graven images or any likenesses of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim. He wants us to himself. He doesn't want to share us with anyone else, does he? He shouldn't. He created us. He birthed us. He breathed the very life into us. Being jealous of our creator, Yahweh, also means being jealous to live according to the way of Yahweh. Halakha. Living out his regulations. Walking out his regulations. Just as he told us to do. Uh, according to the way of Yahweh and his Mashiach, our lifestyles clearly reveal whether or not we are in relationship with Yahweh and his Mashiach. That is so true. Think about the things we do every single day. And God's... I'm blessed. I have accountability partner right here. 
He, he works up here. We work alongside each other. He and Valerie, we are accountability partners, and we go to each other. I mean, I'm their boss, and they still come to me. <laughs> you should not have done that. Mm -hmm. But, guys, that's, a bro that's a, the love of a brother or a sister who will keep your foot from sliding into the gates of hell. Well, that's that's love. Yeah, the most beautiful thing about it is that when you bring up scripture to somebody, to a brother or sister, it's not like you think what it's going to be like. It's not going to be like, oh, you know, it's not going to be that secular thinking. It's going to be like, oh, okay. I see what you're You, you know hit I mean? it right there, though, Seth. It's bringing it up to a brother or a sister. Because if it's a brother or sister, that's part of our family. Yep. It's someone we love and we care for. And we know what their walk is. We know how they're supposed to be walking. And they're going to be receptive to a brother or sister coming to them. Yep. It might hurt for a second. Might, you might want to stop off. And, it might sting. It might sting a little bit because it's salty, isn't it? Yep. We should be salt and light. But it ain't going to stink. It, but it's not going to stink. That's right. <laughs> It's not for long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> so Paul wrote here, he said, you cannot drink the cup of the master and the cup of demons. What? You can't have, you can't have both you, you can, Listen, guys. Two masters. You, you can't have a Christmas tree in a church. You can't worship the lawless Christ and the Messiah who is the law. You can't do it both, guys. You can't have... You cannot... Have one foot inside the church where they are teaching that he is and came and he did away with the law, and the other foot, you can't drink from the, the table of demons and the table of, of our master. And you cannot be partakers at the table of our master and at the table of demons. You can't mix holy with profane, and, and that is Easter. And you, you can't go to an Easter pageant and then come to Pesach. Doesn't work. In fact, he says you can't do that unless you're covenanted. You can't even, the only festival that he says you have to be covenanted is his Pesach. If you're not covenanted or at least trying to be covenanted, a stranger or Gareem who is practicing the laws, you can't even come to his Pesach. Now the rest of the festivals you can come to. You can attend them, but not Pesach. And, and Grant I remember the first year you didn't come to Pesach because you, you weren't covenanted and you didn't want to be breaking the, the command. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember that. When, when he first came, he was like, I'm not giving up my pizza, right? I'm not giving up I my... I ain't giving my, up my pork belly. I don't want to give up my pork. Or Easter, when he like Easter. Uh, but what Easter, about the... Yeah. I mean Easter. But the, the Ashtar eggs, what do we... I mean, Easter eggs. You like boiled eggs anyway. I love boiled eggs. I love boiled eggs. Oh, buddy, I'll bring you some next week, okay? Uh, <laughs> and then with, uh, pickled eggs. Uh, I'll, I'll bring, pickled eggs are so good. I'll bring you some of my pickled hot spicy <laughs> eggs. So, well, look, look, now I'm, I'm starting to do a little. I want some of those eggs too. <laughs> so, so, guys. He says, uh, if we try to eat at the table of the master and at the table of demons, would we provoke our master's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Whenever we provoke Yahweh to jealousy, we're asking for disciplinary measures. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Spank the hand. Right? It hit her back? I don't know what I was doing. Look, I never... Uh. I never, I, never <laughs> I don't strike my employees. He's like, ah, master. No, he smacks his back on, disciplines us. He does. I, and I, guys, listen, my prayer has been for years. If I get off the, the path, if I go to the right or the left, smack me back on. S slap me hard enough that you get my attention because I'm usually running fast, okay? If I'm going fast, I'm probably not going to feel a little nudge. Don't nudge me. Smack me. Smack me back into place. Uh, no. I'm not talking to you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just like you're looking all, smack me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, too bad. 
Uh, listen, for some of us, it takes that. The, the, the oh, older man. we get, the more headstrong we are, the more we, we, we think that the direction that we're going is correct. Yeah. And so I need a hard two by four, maybe a, a two by six. I don't know. It's whatever y'all has to strike me with to get me back on track. Whenever we provoke Yahweh to jealousy, we're asking for disciplinary measures. Unfortunately, many religious feel, people feel that they have the upper hand and presume to tell Yahweh how to run the universe. Rather than being jealous of Yahweh's ways, they fashioned their own gods according to religious traditions, something which Yahusha and our Mashiach frequently railed against. And he did, didn't he? We've got some verses there. I'm going to give those verses in case anybody wants to look them up. Matthew 15, 1 through 9. Matthew 23, 13 through 33. Mark 7, 1 through 23. Tell me to slow down if you need to. 1 through what? 1 through 23. Luke 11, 37 through 34. Go through there and see if you see some that. We, we need to stop and read because I'm going to keep going because I know that lasagna is heating up downstairs. The leavened bread. Um, Valerie, we didn't have our, what was? Hala. Hala. Man, hala. you need to haul her out and give me some hala. Hala. hala we didn't have our hala bread. We've only got leavened bread with garlic and yum, butter. Oh, yeah. Yahweh is jealous for his namesake. He guards all that is righteous according to his word. In, in some cases, he even leads rebellious souls into greater rebellion to make a clear demarcation between righteous and the wicked. This is exactly what he did, guys, with Pharaoh. He hardened his heart to show the world how evil and wicked he was. He gave him the strength to do exactly what he wanted to do. Have you ever wanted to do something bad and you just didn't have the heart to do it? This is Yah going, I'm going to give you the heart because you're evidently evil. And he gave him the heart to do exactly what he, he intended to do. Therefore, Elohim will send upon, upon them the strength of a, of a deception that they may believe a lie and that they may all be condemned to believe not the truth but have pleasure in iniquity. And that is 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. Since Yahweh's love for his creation is constant according to his righteous judgments, his judgments are all righteous. Isn't that beautiful? Why then should anyone question whether Yahweh loves him? Why would Yahweh create life unless he delighted in it for his good pleasure? Everything Yahweh creates is part of his plan and purpose. Guys, that means every one of us have purpose. He created us for something unique. We're not all created for the exact same reason, except to get back to him, right? Yeah. But he's going to use each one of your abilities, like Grant and Bailey. He's going to use your abilities to get closer to him, your ability to cross your eyes, Grant. Okay. Um, since Yahweh's love for his creation is constant according to his righteous judgments, then why should anyone question whether Yahweh loves him? I already read that. Everything Yahweh creates is part of his plan and purpose. But as, as it is written, I love this. This is one of my favorite. It's 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 14. And it says, The eye has not seen, nor has the ear heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man, that which Elohim has prepared for those who love him. Guys, we can't even begin to even imagine in our wildest dreams the beauty that Yah has planned for us. When mankind is jealous of his creator, he becomes divinely inspired in Mashiach's government and in the Olam Haba in the world to come. Everything in the nature, in the natural world has re repercussions in the spiritual world. Guys, this is very, very true. Everything you do physically and mentally, everything that you do will will reflect in your body spiritually and in the spiritual realm. I, I can tell you, <clears throat> if you're not being obedient to his commands in his Torah, you will see a lot of the results of that in your physical body. 
and in your spiritual walk. All right? As you begin to walk it out, your spiritual body, your physical body will, will straighten up. Everything in the natural world has repercussions in the spiritual world. Phineas, who doesn't love Phineas, right? Pincus, as some people know him, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, has turned wrath away from the children of Israel and that he is jealous for my jealousy among them so that I can I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. What did Pincus do? He killed um... Zimri which was a prince in the tribe of Simeon, right? He was a Simeonite. He killed Zimri and a princess from the tribe. She wasn't even from a tribe. She was from the Midianites. Where is Midian? Huh? Where, where are the Midianites? The Midianites are where Laban was from. Oh. Actually, Moshe's father-in-law. Yep. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. In the same manner, Yahweh is jealous for his people. We, his people, are jealous of him, and thus refrain from entertaining false deities or religions are in opposition to him. What's in opposition to him? Anything that says that he's been done away with, right? Anyone or anything that says that his commands have been done away with are in total opposition to him. Oh, but did you know? Rabbi Shaul echoed the same jealousy for Yahweh that Phineas displayed when he wrote, for I am jealous over you with a righteous jealousy. I have espoused you to a husband as a chaste bride whom I would present to the Mashiach. But I fear, or else, as the serpent beguiled Eve by his craftiness. Uh-oh, is our electricity turned to pop off? So your minds should be corrupted from should be corrupted from simplicity towards Mashiach. For if he that comes to you had proclaimed to you another Yeshua, whom we have not proclaimed, or if you have received another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well have given your permission. That is 2 Corinthians 11, 2-5. The idea that many opposing religions all lead to the kingdom of Elohim is what? Is that true? All religions lead to Elohim. Thank you. It is false. It is a fallacy. Mashiach taught, enter by the straight door, for wide is the door and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many are they that go that goes through that. Guys, there's a remnant, a remnant. How narrow the door and straight the road that leads to life, and few are they, those that find it. Beware of false prophets that come among you in the clothing of lambs but from within are ravenous wolves. And guys, I, I'm gonna encourage those of you on, online, we're not gonna stop to do it right now, but the second book of Ezra, also known as the fourth book of Ezra, uh, read that, it's uh, in chapter seven. You're gonna read how narrow that path is. It's so narrow that only one person can walk on it at a time. One person. This is a very narrow path. It's not broad. There's not going to be a multitude of people storming to the gates of the kingdom. It's going to be a remnant. It's going to be small. Because he only wants to spend eternity with those who are obedient to his commands, not to the rebellious children. They will not get through the gate. They won't get through the gate. They won't even know the way to the gate. The renewed covenant scriptures clearly revealed that Yeshua and his followers were Torah observant and entrusted with Yahweh's commandments. As a result, Mashiach was jealous for that which belongs to his father, Yahweh, and his lifestyle demonstrated a continuum of covenant that extends from everlasting to everlasting. Jeremiah wrote this, Thus says Yahweh, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the ancient paths. Isn't that beautiful? Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk there. This is where we are today, guys. This is where we are today. Look for the ancient paths. Look for the commandment. Look for the ways that lead you to the door. And what does everyone say? Amen. Everyone says, I don't want to walk in that way. <laughs> no, this did, no, I'm saying we, should, we say amen. Amen. We want those ancient paths. 
But what did what do the majority of the people say? I don't want to do these commands. We're not under those laws. We're no longer under those commands. This is what everyone says. And Jeremiah said they were saying it back then. And that's Jeremiah 6, 16. Yeah. Yeshua taught, bear my yoke upon you and learn from me that I am tranquil and I am meek. And in my heart, you will find tranquility in your souls. For my yoke is pleasant and my burden is light. That is Matthew eleven twenty nine and 30. Yeshua is the ancient path that originated when Adam and Hua were redeemed from sin. Listen, Yahuwah was the ancient path. He was the very word that went down and walked with Adam and Hua when they were, were escorted out of the garden. All counterfeit religion is exposed through belief upon Yeshua Messiah and Torah observance. And Yeshua said to those Yahudins who believed in him, if you should abide in my words, truly you are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. They said to him, we are the seed of Abraham, and never has bondage to anyone been served by us. How do you say that you will be free men? And Yeshua said to them, Amen and Amen. I say to you that anyone who commits sin is a servant of sin. And a servant does not remain forever in the house, but the son remains forever. Who's going to obey the father? The servant or the son? Who's going to obey him? His children, the ones who love him, are, and are going to be obedient to his word. The servant is going to slip, isn't he? He's going to fall. If there, therefore the son should, should set you free, truly you will be free men. And free is what we are through his commandments. I want to read one more thing to you. Sorry. It's just one more, and then we're out of, we're out of here. Let's see. Nice. We may be out of here. Kinda, <laughs> we're kind of out of here. It's in, it's in Jubilees. I think it's 32. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and watch me not be able to find it now. It's in 23. So I've got dyslexia, okay? <laughs> 32, 23, I, I do everything backwards. Okay, in 23, 26, and in those days, the children shall begin to study the Torah. Hello, what are we studying today, guys? The Torah. The Torah. Yeah. In those days, the children will begin to study the Torah and to seek the commandments and to return to the path of righteousness. And the day shall begin to grow many and increase among those children of men till the, their days draw nigh to 1,000 years. This is millennial talk, guys. So you're going to tell me in the millennial reign, we're going to start studying the Torah, but until then, we don't have to do it? Let me tell you something. Those walking out Torah before the millennial reign gets here, if they survive and they walk into the millennial reign, they'll probably be teaching the Torah. They'll be the teacher that everyone's grabbing a hold of saying, teach us. Teach us, teach us, teach us the way of Yah. Guys, we've got to get this right. We've got to love with the, the love that Yah had. Just as Paul said, I'm presenting you as a spotless bride to the, the, the bridegroom. This is what we should be doing, right? Look, we did that in an hour and a half. Good job, Biggie. <laughs> I buzzed only because a lot of times it has gone three hours, and I've got people passing out and falling into <laughs> so snow. <laughs> he's saying he's saying that he, they're so bored they're falling into <coughs> snoring. So guys, let's pray, okay? Ah, but Father, we love you. We do love you. Father. I love your word. It just when we read it, we grow. It changes us. It changes the fiber within us. Father, forgive us for our weaknesses. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for where we fall short. And as we teshuva, give us the strength. Give us the wisdom and the understanding to walk out your way, to walk out your Torah. Father, change us. Change our heart. Change our, our brain, our mind, the way we think. Change our very tongue, Father. Give us the strength to change all of this. 
Only you can give us that strength. Only through your Torah can we walk this out. So, Father, we just praise you for your word. We thank you that you are changing us. I've seen change in our group. I've seen change in, in the kids that are in our group. Father, they're changing and they're growing. Thank you for that, Father. We praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name that is holy and set apart above all other names. And we thank you for the sacrifice of our Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, for the, the sacrifice that he made so that we can be made spotless as we teshuva and as we walk it out according to his, his commands. We pray all these things in the precious name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our Savior and our soon coming King. Amen. Amen. So, Shabbat. hallelujah. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you for joining us today. It says action is needed because our keyframe rate is too low, and I have no idea what that means. I need my Rodney. We pray that this has been a blessing for you. And let me see. I'm seeing that we need some prayers here. Robert, Patty Howard, we will be praying for her. She's your son's mother-in-law. Let me see here. Who is? Oh, I don't know how to. I've got to get the kids to manipulate this. Oh, with your finger, that's all you do? <laughs> it's touch screen. You just move it. Oh, goodness, that's a lot of people. That's just, that's, so, well, we moved it. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> and uh, so he's saying, hey, sister, I'm going to say, I'm your sister, too, because you're walking this walk, even though I know you're really talking to Valerie. So, hi, and we love you all there. Mark, tell Jessica hello, and we love her, and we miss y'all, and we want y'all to come bring Ace and Hope. Grace. 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 Her name's Grace. <laughs> I did that because I knew they were going to correct me. And Grace. So Grant's like, yeah, bring Grace. Okay, so we love y'all. Uh, we love you all out there. <laughs> we bless you. And come come with us this afternoon. We're going to study the Torah, which is going to be Exodus. And we're going to be studying about grumbling. Don't be grumbling. Dun, 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 dun. I see it. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Oh, where's the end thing? There it is. Right there.